on their way back to Peshawar with futile attempts to find both Cho and Mikal. Rohan, Yasmin and Bessie opened their eyes on GT Road at 4 a.m. They see the fakir having heavy metallic chains around his neck crossing the road in front of their car. Afterward, they hear a loud blast. A nearby church is blasted. Since fakir was moving towards that direction, Rohan realizes that the fakir must be hurt. With trepidation, they head towards the incident. Rohan finds the wounded fakir. However, Rohan asks the fakir if anyone can define the word. Fakir divides the word into two polarities, Ahle Dil and Ahle Hawas. Additionally, Fakir tells Rohan that whoever has the power desires to hold on to the power. This is what both the West and the Taliban are doing. Later on, they reach his to his hometown here in Peshawar and discover that Joe is no more. Analysis of Chapter 9 The Reflection of Ahle Dil and Ahle Hawas It will not be an exaggeration to say that the novel represents the dominant theme of two quite contrasting polarities, the good and the evil. Nadeem Aslam has quite subtly termed the two clashing images as Ahle Dil and Ahle Hawas. Readers know who is Ahle Dil and who is Ahle Hawas. This novel in general, the chapter in particular, asserts that Ahle Hawas dominates Ahle Dil. Both the West and the Taliban are projected as groups of Ahle Hawas. Both justify their evils action and reactions is something that ought to be done. The West is craving for superpower so that to extend their territorial domination. Additionally, the American soldiers show no mercy because for them no one is innocent in this guilty nation. The furious woman out of low vengeance in the, uh, in the previous chapter brutally killed Joe, even though Joe was not the part of that evil game. Amidst a no mercy situation, innocent people are scapegoated. On the other hand, Taliban rule with urban hands. They justify their devilish agenda as a holy jihad. They deprive women of their due rights of education freedom to choose and freedom to voice their opinions. They drag innocent toes into jihad and send them to the front line of battle. Furthermore, they brainwash those naive toes with the tool of religion, convincing them to own martyrdom, thus paradise. In a nutshell, they want to hold on to the power by hook or by crook. So, both West and Taliban are power mongers. They fight for the same causes, to hold on to the power. Both the groups justify their violence is justice done upon the face of earth. Clash of civilization, intolerance to other religion and revenge are some of the common causes that result in the massacre of innocent people. Fakir is a symbolic character. Since I have already discussed something about the symbolic character of Fakir, this chapter is something new and new to the character of Fakir. This chapter supplements something new about his character. That is, when one does good for other, that good then becomes one's spiritual armor. The chains around Fakir's neck is 
and other people's wishes and desires. He is symbolically projected as, a, as an embodiment of goodness. This gives another message as well. Selfless life is enlightenment. He is a man of Ahl Dil, contrary to the representation of Ahl Hawas, Taliban, and the West.